All right, hello everyone. Eric Marks here again with FindingMiddleEarth.com. And before we get started, if you guys head over to my website, FindingMiddleEarth.com, click the big subscribe button in the top right-hand corner. Uh, just pop your email in the box and you'll get sent a free 45-minute video going through all of my camera bags, like a big glorified what's in my camera bag video, all the gear that I use for landscape photography. Okay, so today, uh, we're not gonna talk about gear. We're not gonna talk about cameras or anything, any rumors. It's just gonna be about composition. We're gonna talk about composition, break it down a little bit. Um, and that's gonna be more fun than gear. I like talking about just stripping everything down and just talking about the art of photography. So composition is one of those really um, tough things to get your head kind of wrapped around when you first get started in photography. It's a very, uh, it's a very tough thing to learn how to practice because a lot of people don't really quite get what it is or how to practice it. And it's very tough to say what's right or wrong because there really is no right or wrong, but there are technical things and rules that can be applied to help your composition. Um, so I'll tell you a story and then we'll kind of get into some tips that I can give you. When I first started photography, uh, or when I first got my real DSLR, I think it was a Ni Nikon D80, something like that. Uh, we had a, a friend of the family, it was a friend of my dad's, an, an older gentleman, that loved photography. And he had been doing photography for many years. He had shot film, and then he, he was shooting Canon Digital at the time, I think, when, when I knew him. And I, he loved hiking. So whenever he would go hiking with my dad, me and my dad have always loved the outdoors. We're the two outdoor nuts in the family. So um, I went hiking with my dad, and the friend of the family that's a photographer. And this one time when we went hiking after I just got my first DSLR, I remember we were hiking up in North Georgia to a waterfall and we got to the waterfall and I remember thinking, man, this is it. This is like my, my chance to prove myself with this guy. I'm gonna show him that like I'm a real photographer now because I got my DSLR. And so I pulled my, my Nikon out of my bag, took the lens cap off, click, I got the shot, it's a winner. All right guys, let's move on to the next waterfall. And I was ready, that's literally what I said. Like I got the shot in the bag, I was like, dad, let's, let's, let's go to the next waterfall. And he was like, uh, son, he, he's still taking the photo over there. And I was like, what? Oh, oh, okay, well, oh, well, you know, we'll, we'll wait on him, it's fine. So I was just like, okay, any day now. 10 minutes went by, 15 minutes went by. He was, he was on his stomach, on his knees, he had, threw his tripod away, he was doing all this stuff, and I was like, what the heck is this guy doing? And he, he took his shot. Moved on to the next waterfall, I did the same thing. Boom, click, I'm an amazing photographer, let's move on, and he did the same thing. He just kind of like wrestled with it and did some like, rah, this is not, rah, it's not working. And I was like, man, this guy's not as good as I thought, apparently. So then on the hike back, I said, uh, can, I, can I take a look at your shot? Can I, can I see what you got? And he showed, he showed me the back of his camera, and I, I was like blown away. I was like, wait a second. Why does his shot look like that and mine looks like this? And we took a picture of the exact same waterfall. And he said, oh, well, the reason why that is, because I asked him, I said, why does your shot look so much better than mine? And he said, oh, it's, it's composition. You, you have to work on your composition. And I'm sure the whole time that he was doing that and I was just like clicking away, he was probably like, God, this, what this chump little kid is a moron, um, which I, I was, right? I, was, I, I should have probably asked a lot of advice. Uh, so luckily I asked him about composition and at the time I was kind of afraid to be like, well, what is composition? Can you define that? And so it wasn't a few months went by where, uh, I was probably still doing the whole point and click thing. And we went hiking with him again by this lake and we were at this lake and he was doing some, some night photography. It was in, into the evening and I was trying to do night photography, you know, with long shutter speeds. I was a, just a newbie. So I was trying to figure out what to do. And I said, so I remember last time composition, you know, you told me to work on, can you kind of like give me an example, like define that? And he said, uh, he said, yeah, um, composition is where the art comes in. It's the very foundation of your photograph. It's how you allow your viewers to enter your world of art, your creative eye. That, that's how your viewers see the scene through you. It's how you compose your, your scene. He said, look around you. Look at all this, this beautiful landscape, 360 degrees. You have to make the artistic decision to choose what part of this scene you're going to let your viewers see to convey the experience that you've had here today with me. And I was just like fascinated by that. I was like, wait a second. 
So you're telling me that I don't, composition isn't like doing what you're doing. Like I don't have to do your composition. You're telling me that you can get a great composition from, from over there and I might find just as good of a composition, if not a better one, 50 feet that way. And he was like, yeah, you just have to look for the composition. You have to look for something that, that you think is interesting to your eyes and then you have to make it look interesting on camera and then hopefully your viewers are gonna see that as interesting as well. And he said, sometimes it just doesn't work. And that's, that's so true. So now that the story's over, if there's anybody that's just beginning and kind of getting into photography and wondering what composition is and how to, how to practice it, it's tough. But I see composition as, uh, let's break it into like three main things for me, all right? It's, number one is creativity, right? Kind of like your style, like how you like to compose your shots, if you like to do the whole like dominant foreground, distant background, it's just your style. Number two, is attention to detail, which we'll talk about more in a second. And then number three is learning that the tripod is the worst thing in the world when it comes to composing your shot. And we'll talk about that in a second too. So first let's, let's touch on the creativity, all right? That's just simply um, your style, your personal artistic taste, okay? This, that's just basic stuff, what you like. If you don't like the composition, then don't try to sell it to your viewers because if you don't like your work and you're not taking pride in it, they're not gonna like it either. Number two is the attention to detail. Attention to detail is learning the things that don't work in a composition and the things that do work in a composition. Now this can be very subjective because um, the whole world of art is that way. There's no right or wrong. But what I mean is if you're in this beautiful landscape and you're, you're shooting this mountain vista and there's a beautiful sunset and all these things, you just like, there's just a miracle happening in front of you. But there's a, an electrical box or a power line kind of running through your shot. Pay attention to that because that's probably not something you want to put in there. That's going to save you some Photoshop work later. Or, you know, if, if you leave, um, you know, let's say that you're, you're photographing a, this uh, an autumn forest of fall colors, but there's this one big dead tree that's sticking out like a sore thumb. You just don't notice it because you're looking over here at all these beautiful trees and you just go, click, I got everything. So it's going to be beautiful. You have to pick out the, the details that really sell you on the scene. What drew you into the scene? Ask yourself that question. Why did I just stop at this moment in time here and even think about taking this photo? You stop because something pulled you in a color, a tree, a shape, a pattern, something. That should be the first thing you think about on how to, to shape your composition around that element, the very element that stopped you to even think about taking a photo. And sometimes you'll pull out your camera and you'll go, okay, it's just a really beautiful thing to look at, but eh, it doesn't look great on camera. And that happens quite often to me, that's fine. Put your camera back in your bag and go search for the good composition. So that's the thing, that's my biggest tip. Stop and think about what's, what, what really caught your eye as a photographer and then bring your camera in and say, okay, how can, I, how can I take that one element that really excited me? How can I make that into a composition? How can I, how can I compose that into to a scene that is interesting to look at as an image? So that you'll have to practice and you'll get better and better at doing that. The third one is the tripod, learning that the tripod is like the worst thing ever when you're doing composition. The reason is because Almost every photographer that I see or go out and shoot with that has a tripod, they'll go out and they'll just they'll take the tripod out when they see a scene like a waterfall or a sunset, they'll take the tripod out and they'll do all the legs out and they'll do this and they'll get the tripod eye level because it's comfortable, you don't have to bend over and they'll stick their camera on there and they'll just be like, eh, there we go, click. And even though these photographers are much more experienced than the the you know 15 year old me or 13 year old me who was just newbie pointing and clicking, it's still a version of that because it's kind of being lazy. Don't even think about your tripod until you get the composition you want. Get on your stomach, get on your knees, roll around, do whatever you need to do, and then when you find it, hold your camera there and make your tripod adapt to that composition. Because your tripod can get there. The tripods these days, the legs can go all the way out, they can get all the kinds of weird positions. Don't even think about your tripod until you have nailed your composition. Do some test shots. I don't care if it's the right exposure, just nail some test shots, even if you do it with your phone, which I've done many, many times, uh, and then get your camera gear out and set everything up and get the composition. Because you'll know on your phone right away if it's gonna look good or bad on an image, so just test it on your phone. So there you go, there's, there's just some tips for composition. Creativity, learn your style, kind of pick up on, on who you are, what do you, what you want your work to look like. Uh, your attention to detail, make sure you don't put distracting things in your images, and then your uh, tripod is the devil when it comes to composition. 
Um, and that's about it. The, the biggest thing is, is I'll end with this because this is, this is important. It's about taking the experience that you had on that day or that trip and giving as much of that experience as you can to your viewers with one image or a series of images. All right, so maybe, you know, four or five images from the day or one image. I always like to see if I can fit something as much as I can into one image so that I don't have to you know, share five images in case I want to sell a print or write a blog post or do something. I, a series of images can be very cool if you do like a themed series, but think about the experiences you've had, how the scene has made you feel, the emotion, and wait for that perfect moment, the perfect composition where you say to yourself, this is the, the best that I felt about this trip all week. This is the coolest thing that I've seen all week or all day at this place. So this must be what I want my viewers to see. And that's, what, that's when you nail the shot, boom. You got it in the bag, you're good to go, your viewers are gonna love it, and you seal the deal and that's it. That's, that's pretty much how I work around composition. It's not as hard as it seems, and at the same time, it is kind of as hard as it seems. It's, it's, it's not a hard thing to do, but it can be a tough thing to master uh, because I'm still working on it. I still take photos all the time when I'm out, and if I'll take 10 photos, odds are I'll like one of them. And I'm lucky if I get, like, I literally consider myself lucky if I get two photos from, like, an outing. Like, I'll feel good if I get one really solid photo from an outing. But that's how tough it can be. So if you go out three or four times and you don't get anything that you like, that's okay. It, it, you, you will find something there's some research that goes into that, right? Like you, you can show up to locations at the right time. You can be there at golden hour or at sunrise or blue hour, or if you're shooting astrophotography, you can choose a clear night to shoot the stars. There's, there's research that obviously can, can make your life easier so that you can ensure that you're at least in the right time of day and the right elements around you in order to, to set yourself up for a nice composition. That's just basic research. Um, but composition comes to personal preference with creativity and then simply just thinking about what sold you on, on this scene or this vista that you're looking at and figure out how you're gonna sell that to the viewers through an image on the camera. And when I mean sell it, I don't mean like make money on it or monetize, I mean like how are you gonna pull them in and make them feel some emotion from it? Because uh, that's more, way more rewarding than selling a bunch of prints and making a million dollars is having someone tell you, even if it's five people tell you, wow, that, that image really moves me. It, it, it just sparked a memory of something with somebody or at some place, something when I was a kid. And so because of that memory now, may I have a print. I'd like to hang it in my bedroom. That's when it gets rewarding because then you can really, um, I hate to use the word sell, but I guess share. You can really share that experience with another person. And that's just a cool thing. That's how, that's how art communicates. It's, it's, it's emotive. It's very, very uh, emotional and very cool. So here you go. Uh, the video drug on a little longer than I thought it would, but uh, I really wanted to get out how, how composition kind of you know, formed for me over the years and changed into something I could understand. Because at first, I had no clue. So don't feel bad if you have no clue what composition is. It will come. Practice those things. Hopefully those few tips helped you. And if you guys have any more questions or if I forgot something, which I probably did, leave them in the comments below and I'll answer your question. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.